Hi, I'm Greg, and this is Animal Diversity in a Nutshell. Wait, but what is diversity? Well, other than a lot of hard to pronounce names, it's how each of these are similar and different, and how this is actually a close relative of ours. And as the name states, this is the diversity of animals. So yeah, this is no plant zone. Let's start with this guy. He's pretty important. This guy's our common ancestor, and all life has eventually evolved from him. So we have him to thank. Okay, now the animals. I'm going to start with the most simple phylum of organisms, but it's important to remember that these organisms aren't less advanced than humans, they've just evolved in a different way. First are the peripherans. Sponges practically exist as living vacuums. Their skeletons can be made of two materials, and they're powered by flagellated coenocyte cells that move water while removing the nutrients from it. They have a canal system that comes in a few different flavors, and, like ice cream, most sponges tend to prefer one. There are four types of sponges. Tiny calcareous sponges, deep sea silicated glass sponges, large marine sponges, and the recently named homosclomorphins. Now, phylum placozoa. These guys are small and flat, and they're found everywhere. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's about it. Next are the diploblastic animal phyla, or animals with two cell layers in their embryos. Cnidarians are the jellies. These guys are radially symmetric and have harpoon-like stingy cells called cnidocytes. Some of these guys have alternation of generations, where the animal cycles between jellyfish and an enemy. There are five groups this time. Box jellyfish, bushy marine jellyfish, the diverse hydrozoan jellyfish, siphonophores, and anemones, which include coral too. The other diploblastic group is the tenophores, and no, they don't actually glow. The cilia on comb jellies is so tightly packed together that it actually reflects light itself. These guys also spontaneously form an anus when they need to defecate. So, yeah. From now on, it's the three-layered tripleblasts, and let's start with the protostome phylums. Platyhemethes are the flatworms of our world. Flame cells are new, and they act as an early form of digestive system for these animals. Flatworms fall into two groups, the ones which are cute, and the ones which will kill you. The nice guys are the freshwater flatworms, like Planaria, who have some of the first sensing organs we can see. They also reproduce by penis fencing, which is exactly what you imagine. The other groups are the parasitic flatworms, such as the two host flukes, fish-based parasites, monogenians, and the tapeworms. Another phylum of worms is the annelids. Annelids are where you first see segmentation and concentration of sense organs at the head, called cephalization. Most of these worms move by using small hairs, called setae, and paddle feet, called parapodia. Of the two groups of annelids, the first one is split into many categories, so let's do this quick. There are the marine tube worms, whale fall and vent specific tube worms, spoon worms, earthworms and leeches, and the slightly phallic peanut worms. Lastly, there's the second group of advanced bobbit worms, which are straight nightmare fuel. The last predominantly worm phyla are the nematodes, which can be found everywhere in the world in huge numbers, nematomophorians, nemertae, and acanthocephalia. That's a lot of worms. Okay, now we've got the mollusks. The visceral mass of a mollusk holds the mantle and the shell along with most organs, while the head foot has a large foot, uh, it, it's in the name, and small chitinous feet called radula. As for groups, monoplacophorums are a species thought to be extinct with repeating organs in a spiral formation. The chitons are a marine species with eight plates. Tusk shells are burrowing filter feeders. Bivalves are species like mussels and scallops. And cephalopods are octopi, squids, cuttlefish, and nautili. The gastropods, however, are marine snails, terrestrial snails, and nudibrae. Lastly, there are two separate groups of tiny shellless marine mollusks. The last two protostomes are phylum Anthropodia and Pananthropodia, and yes, they are different. If you want to spot an anthropod, look for one thing, tagmata, which are the head, thorax, and abdominal segments of arthropods. Yet again, there are many groups, so here we go. The Chelicerae have two tagmata, and include spiders, scorpions, ticks, and crabs. Mirapods are millipedes and centipedes. Crustaceans have nifty exoskeleton carapace, shredding mandibles or maxillae, and two tagmata. In the crustians, there are ostracods, brachiopods, copepods, barnacles, isopods, amphipods, krills, and lobsters. Lastly are the hexapods, or insects. Insects are very disparate in their lifestyles and development. For panarthropods, there's only two groups, tardigrades and exotic velvet worms. With this said, most of the diversity we actually see falls into the last two major phyla, which are classified as deuterosomes. Phyla 1 is the echinoderms, and it's urchins, starfish, and sea cucumbers. 
These organisms have an endoskeleton with bony calciceous plate called an ossicle. The endoskeleton sports a water vascular system that acts like a balloon inside the echinoderm. This is all topped off with small grooves called palpulae for diffusive respiration. Oh yeah, did I mention they can also regenerate? The main groups are the sea cucumbers, starfish, sea lilies, brittle spars, and urchins, which are usually known for their Aristotle's lantern tooth and the pedicillary tipped spines. Finally, we've come to the chordates, which include all mammals, fish, bird, reptiles, sharks, and plenty of others inside one huge diverse file. The evolution of chordates came with five things, a notochord, a dorsal nerve column, pharyngeal slits, an endostyle, and a post-anal tail. Since they're so diverse, we can separate the chordates into seven main groups. Lancelets and tunicates are invertebrate chordates and rely on a notochord as the back part, which is group number one. Before the evolution of jaws, there was jawless fish, which mostly went extinct except for the hagfish and ramflies, and that's group number two, and I'm only getting started. Group three starts with the cartilage-based sharks and rays in addition to the chimeras. Oh look, it's group four, the bony fish with their bony operculum and fancy swim batters. These guys are either ray or lobe finned. Here's the Sicilian salamanders and frogs, which are the amphibians, that can breathe through diffusion, and that's group number five. On to group number six, where we have the reptiles, and yes, this includes birds. Some would say flight because the avian reptiles have figured this one out, with help from their pneumatized bones, continuous breathing, and new bone structures. Here's the mammals taking up the rear as group seven, who have evolved hair follicles and are now mostly fuzzy with a bunch of new sweat glands too. Well, I guess that's it, and that concludes this video. Hope you enjoyed the entire year of information in under 10 minutes. Thanks.